Okay, remember the other day when I showed that live stream that had the people in Kenya actually setting their own rates. They had their rate card hanging in the back of the car, and then they turned around and would add money to the top of whatever the rider paid already. And I kept saying, man, this is not the way to do it. They're, they're hurting people like that because they're the people are still paying Uber, and then they're turning around charging people on top of that. So people are like, man, this is getting crazy. Uber actually answered to that. This is this is let me show you some what Uber actually said. Hold up for a second. Let me let me see some. Okay, right here. I'm, let me read this to you right here. Let me read this. Y'all gonna like this. This is where it says Uber raises ride charges after pressure from drivers. This is how they putting it on the drivers. They said they raised the ride ride charges after the pressure from the drivers. They didn't have to do that. They could have just raised the rates and never touch the actual fares that the riders were paying but they want to put it on the drivers and well the reason why you guys are paying a lot is because you know the drivers there's pressure from the drivers and this is what it's saying right here it says ride hailing company uber has raised its ride charges including minimum fares bowing to pressure from its drivers who have been protesting its prices for months and even resorting to setting their own rates in recent weeks in an announcement on Monday, the company said the price increases will be across all of its products, revealing a 10 percent adjustment to minimum fares. However, the company remained tight lipped about how the pricing of its various ride products will be affected. Effective today, we finished our calculations. We first had to analyze the price, look at the data, speak to the drivers with whom we have roundtables almost every week. We finished our analysis and now have increased our price on all of our products, said Emron Manji, the Uber's head of East Africa. While the company was tight-lipped about how prices would change for different products, it indicated that the lowest fare a passenger can pay, the minimum fare for the Uber Chap Chap product, would increase by 10%. If you're only going down the road, we'll give you a minimum to make sure that that driver is compensated for the shortest journeys. The minimum Chap Chap is now SH220. That was This was SH200, Mr. Manji said. 10%. They increased the rider price by 10%. They give us boosts all the time. Usually when they give us a boost, what do they give us a boost by? 10%. They give us a boost by 10%. Let me find it again. Wait a minute. Where is that thing? Here it is right here. Is it Uber says this pricing mechanism algorithm takes into account factors such as the minimum fare, the starting fare, the fare per kilometer, which is based on the distance travel, the fare per minute, which takes into account the time taken to complete a journey. Uber's fare adjustment comes in the wake of complaints from passengers that drivers were charging more than the price that flashed up on their app, generated by the company's algorithms. Drivers have resorted to producing their own fare guide, which they print, laminate, and post in their cars for customers to see. Mr. Maji said the drivers' protests were an input, but not the decisive factor. Sure, right, yeah, they got tired of getting their asses handed to them. Even before the protest, we increased the price of Uber Comfort about eight weeks ago because the demand was good and the number of vehicles on the product needed to go up. It's an input, but not the most decisive input. There are multiple other conditions. So what he's saying is the demand was good, but they didn't have a good supply on it. It wasn't saturated enough for Uber Comfort. So what did they, too many people had the small raggedy cars. So they said, well, we, we raised the price on Uber Comfort because we had enough raggedy cars on a lower tier, just not enough cars on this tier. You got to catch what they're saying sometimes. And this is after months of driver protests against the ride hailing companies price mechanisms several other companies had adjusted prices but uber remained adamant we hope that this behavior of price negotiations will now stop you see that we hope that this behavior of price negotiations will now stop we encourage all passengers that if they find themselves subject to that please report it to us directly or in the app we ask all passengers to please report any behavior where a driver is asking for an amount more then what is in the app, Mr. Manji said on Monday. Passengers should report more than what, if the driver says, hey, pay me this, and it's more than what's in it. He didn't say nothing about less than what's in the app. He just said, we hope that this behavior of price negotiations will now stop. We're independent contractors, and I told y'all, we negotiate. They're hoping that that behavior will now stop. Not saying we're going to, you know, ban and block everybody who's doing it. He says, no, we just hope it'll stop. Overall, we think that we've settled is a good balance between an increase for the drivers while being affordable for the passengers. See, add money to the passengers. They added like 10% to the to the passenger fare. But how much of that are they going to give to the driver? Are they going to give them a, a 10% boost? A boost on a boost? No boost at all? Because they give us 10% boost all the time and it really doesn't make a difference. 
the company has been caught in the dilemma of dealing with re resistive drivers who feel that fees are minimal compared to its cost and a price sensitive Kenyan market where any slight increase in price results in a drop of customers. Yeah, right. What they said, if, oh, if, if we move the price up, then our customers are going to disappear. No, if you just pay the drivers more, then that means you won't ma maintain as many much in profits. That's what you're getting. But the customers can always pay more. What they're telling you is that every time they're doing these surges, every time they're doing these turbo boosts and all this stuff, they're actually charging customers a lot more and paying us a fraction of what they're charging. We know that already because we leave concerts where people are paying $100 and we're still getting like $40 out of that, $42. With about an eight, with about eight different products in the country and more than 20,000 drivers on the app, Uber said it has to invest heavily in weekly promotions where a passenger pays less than the average fare for a trip to encourage more trips. Uber has also said it recently seen an increase in customer complaints about drivers asking for money from rides, although it did not disclose the figures. We're not able to provide that figure, but we have channels through the app where you can complain about a specific trip. Then we can invest, start an investigation and take actions. We have been seeing reports coming in and we're taking action. Miss Lorreen Anduro, Uber's head of communications in Kenya. So what they're saying is that they know people are out there doing cash, cash rides. rides. They're not stupid. They know exactly what we're doing all across the boards, America, Australia, UK, they know what we're doing. So what we got to do, because we know that they broke Uber, they broke them. And they says, you know, we know what you guys are doing. You guys are getting money on top of money. The customers are getting upset. Riders are getting upset because they're not, we're going to lose riders because you guys are paying too much. Yet they don't care. Uber don't care about overcharging riders. They don't care about that. What they care about is us getting a chunk of money that they feel we don't deserve. They want to be in charge of our money. They want to say we control what riders get, which in turn controls the demand because they're going to keep driving if we keep them broke. If they start getting too much money, they want to drive as much. They want to start accepting these low trips. And like I said, the algorithm sets the prices. So the algorithm sets the prices based on supply and demand. If riders keep taking the low fares, the algorithm is going to keep kicking those low fares out. They just said it in an article. They said, oh, we boosted comfort because comfort's getting a lot of demands, but we don't have a lot of comfort cars. So what do they do? They want people to start moving up to comfort by saying, hey, man, you should drive on comfort. We're making a lot of money on comfort. Man, you got to go buy you a new car. Rent you a car through Uber, man. Comfort's booming. And so you go get a car on comfort. Saturate the market. Guess what? Now you're getting the same treatment as the people on the lower tiers. Because what happened with Lux? What happened with Premier? All they did was just flood the lower tiers with all of our cars that used to be luxury vehicles. They, flo they flooded the market with these cars. And now we're turning around complaining about how much we're getting paid because Uber purposely flooded that tier. But they're saying, oh, the comfort tier is fine. We don't have a lot of drivers on a comfort tier. Hey, at some point, the Lux tier was fine. Wasn't a whole lot of drivers on a Lux tier. But Lux was like, well, we're not getting a lot of requests on Lux. Oh, they were. They just didn't want to pay Lux. We're not getting a lot of requests on premieres. Oh, you were. You just didn't want to pay it. So what do they do? Force all the drivers down. Force them to take less money. These drivers caught wind of that. And they say, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to add money to it. If, if you want to get my car, guess what? You got to pay Uber, but then you got to pay me a price on top of that. These are our fares here. In America, what do we do? We convert. We say, you know what? You paid Uber 75. Tell you what, pay me 60. See, Uber is saying, let the app know if they're charging you more. They said that in an article. If they're charging you more than what's in the app, let us know. We don't charge you more than what's in the app. We actually charge you less than what's in the app. We negotiate. And Uber is hoping that we stop negotiating. But as long as people negotiate their independent contractor status, go out there and get the money we know we deserve to make. Stop letting the app pay you pennies on the dollars they're making. Apps can't say much. What can they say? This lady wanted to get a ride to the airport. Jeff didn't want to do the ride. Uber tries to stop you. What do they say? Well, just don't take the ride. Just don't take it. No, because what that means is don't take our customer who came through the app, they end up negotiating directly with you, an independent contractor. Now you get paid and we don't get nothing. They want you to take the ride just so you get paid less and they get paid more. There's nothing stopping us from showing these people, hey, there's actually a better app out right now for this long distance trip. I can actually save you, you know, $30 on this trip. Here's another app. Because what Uber say, Lyft say, don't do an off app trip. You don't control all apps. You don't know who has apps and who don't have apps. It's not your business. So therefore, if I tell somebody I can save them more money by doing it differently, it's not up to you. You can't, oh, don't take them off app. How do you know what I'm doing? I could be putting them on a completely different app, my own personal app. You don't know that. 
So therefore, if I got commercial insurance, I got my own app. It's not a TNC app. It's just a me app. And you can say, hey, you know what? I'd rather pay you 100 bucks instead of pay the, the app, you know, 145 yeah, pay me a hundred because they're only giving me like sixty-two dollars for this ride. You paid one hundred and forty-five. I'm getting sixty-two dollars. You're getting like eighty dollars out of this. Uber's getting eighty dollars out of this. So I just moved the price around. I put them on now my tier. Now they're on my app now. So when Uber gets upset about their drivers in Africa doing that, what do they end up doing? Oh, we're just going to charge the rider more. That way we can pay you guys a little more. They were making way more than ten percent on top of these rides. I guarantee they were making more than ten percent. Cause I mean, a ten dollar ride was ten percent of that. A dollar? You really think these people are doing this for an extra dollar? No, these people's probably doing this for extra like three bucks, four bucks, five bucks on top of these little ten dollar rides. They was getting 30, 40, 50 percent more on these rides. So for me, I know I'm getting at least a hundred percent more on the rides. Cause if somebody says, "Hey man, this ride was thirty seven dollars, and I'm getting eighteen, and I'm telling these people sixty dollars, I was getting eighteen. Now I'm getting sixty. I'm telling you, you got to know how to negotiate your prices out there. That's the only way these apps are going to crumble. Africa just showed us. They bent. They said, you know what? If y'all keep doing this and they're not taking any rides, unless people pay more, we're going to lose all of these riders. They're already losing riders with all of us. We all got private rides now. They're all losing riders. The only way. Protesting is not going to. The algorithm don't know protesting. They don't know it. What the algorithm knows is that, hey, there's a demand out there and we're not meeting that demand. There's a supply out there and we're not capitalizing on that supply. That's all the algorithm knows. It knows numbers. If you change those numbers, cancel that ride, decline that ride, move stuff. If you give the algorithm what it wants, the algorithm won't change. It won't change. They just told you the algorithm setting everything. Algorithm won't change. So once the algorithm sees nobody's taking all these rides, it's kicking out flags now. Nobody's taking these rides at this low fare. Nobody's taking out rides at these low fare. They had their lowest fares bumped up by what 10 percent our lowest fares are 262 262 now if they move our rides up 10 percent, that's 26 cents on top of 262 would make it 288 would be the lowest ride you see 288 you'd never see another 262 you'd only see 288 285 that's the lowest you'd see i see 262 still on the app for years we've been seeing that so these people got a 10 percent bump on their lowest fare lowest fare so i'm guaranteeing if we don't keep doing what we doing, these apps will never change. We got to stay with the, our foot on the throttle. We got to make sure that we get these apps to see that we are here making this money, that we're doing it a certain way. And if they don't want to pay us, don't worry about it. We'll pay ourselves. Our brothers and sisters out in Africa, they already showed us right now. If you want to beat these apps, you got to break them. You got to stand strong on your negotiations. You got to break them. If you say this is my price and they say, well, I'm not paying that price, they got to get out. That's what they do in Africa. I don't say, okay, I guess I'll just do it. And no, nah, no, nah, you got to get out. Sorry. That's how you break these apps. Stay on your ground.